Dear students, welcome back to Odelia Vlogs. Today we will complete our principles and methodology of management, our final module that is controlling. We can go to the contents, coordination, its meaning, need, features and techniques of effective coordination, control, its meaning, importance, control process, essentials of an effective control system, budgetary and non-budgetary control techniques. So we can go into the first slide that is coordination. Coordination is the heart of management. It is the orderly synchronization of functions of various departments for achieving organizational goals. It provides key to all the activities. Now we can study the meaning and the need for coordination. First point is integration of objectives, goals, aims of an organization. Second point, achievement of better performance and better results. Third point, achievement of economy and efficiency. Fourth point, maintaining better human relations. Now we can go to the features of coordination. First feature is that it is the exclusive responsibility of the manager. In an organization, the manager has the ultimate responsibility and it cannot be delegated to a specialist of Every responsibility is by the manager. Second point, it calls for a conscious and deliberate effort on the part of managers. Coordination cannot be left to mere cooperation among individuals. It is a deliberate effort by the managers at various levels. Next, coordination is a continuous process and is exercised all the time so that the function is smooth and uninterrupted in an organization. Fourth point, coordination is not a distinct managerial function and the exercise of each managerial function involves coordination. Next is coordination focuses on organizational order, continuity, predictability, accuracy and reliability of the outcome. Sixth point, coordination considers an organization as a system of cooperative group efforts. It recognizes the diversity and interdependence of organizational subsystem and the need for bringing about fusion and synthesis in the efforts. The last point, its main job is to achieve the organizational objectives. So we can go to the next slide. That is, what are the techniques of effective coordination? First one, clearly defined goals. The goals of the organization should be laid down clearly. Every individual in the organization should understand the overall objectives and the contribution to these objectives by his job. Second point, well-defined authority and responsibility. The line of authority and responsibility should be clearly defined to achieve coordination. This enable to indicate as who is he accountable and to whom. Clear-cut authority relationships help in reducing conflicts among different persons. This is essential for a sound coordination. Third point, well-defined work procedures. When the work procedures are well defined and adhered properly, these help to achieve coordination very easily. Fourth point is simplified organization. Coordination becomes easier when the organization is made simple. The structure of a good organization clearly lays down the duties and responsibilities of various positions. So that is... A simplified organization helps in coordination. Second, now the next point is harmonized programs and policies. To secure coordination, we have to maintain consistency of plans and policies between different sections. The plans prepared and policies framed at various levels should be in conformity with the overall plans of the concern. All these plans and policies must finally fit into the objectives of the undertaking of the organization. Next point, effective communication. Coordination requires an effective system of communication which is the key to proper coordination. 
in order to ensure that the policy decisions programs are conveyed at all levels modern means of communication becomes essential also personal contacts should be encouraged next point provisions of check and inspection to achieve coordination there should be provisions for checking and inspection so that we can know what is happening in the organization this will help to correct all those factors which create problems in coordination next point is cooperation coordination must be accompanied by cooperation the individuals in the organization should be willing to help each other voluntarily only if there is cooperation coordination is possible next point effective leadership and supervision coordination can be achieved through effective leadership and supervision effective leadership ensures coordination both at the planning and the implementing stages effective supervision is necessary to guide the activities of the individuals in proper direction the last point proper organizational climate it refers to the work environment that prevails in the organization if this is developed properly much of the coordination problems will not emerge so a proper organizational climate can be developed by effective leadership and supervision high standards of excellence encouragement of participation and group decision making and tolerance of individual differences now we can go to the next topic that is control very very important question comes from controlling always so we can study what is control controlling is a process of ensuring that activities are producing the desired results control is the continuous process of verifying whether actions are being taken as planned and corrective action to ensure that events conform to plans as closely as possible now we can study the next line that is what is the importance of control first one guide to operations control guides the organization and keeps it on the right track it measures progress reveals deviations and indicates corrective actions second one policy verification control helps the organization to verify the quality of its various policies it helps to review revise and update the plans and policies third point is managerial accountability when a manager assigns some activities and delegates authority to his subordinates he becomes accountable for all the ultimate performance next employee morale control creates an atmosphere of order and discipline in the organization which will lead to high morale in the employees high morale means very well behaved uh, employees will be well behaved there there will be no quarrels no disputes nothing like that so that the organization there will be a harmony the next point is psychological pressure control process helps Mm, a psychological pressure by applying on the subordinates for a better performance it inspires employees to work hard and give better performance the last point is coordination in action it helps the managers to coordinate the activities of their subordinates it maintains an equilibrium between ends and means now we can study the process of control or the steps in controlling or it's also asked what are the elements of controlling first one is establishment of standards the first step that is standards standards indicate the criteria against which the actual performance is measured they reflect the desired results or acceptable level of performance there are two types of standards one is quantitative standard second one is qualitative standard quantitative standards are set in physical or monetary terms such standards are set up in production sales finance and other areas where results can be measured in quantitative terms qualitative standards it is not possible to set standards in quantitative terms in certain areas just like goodwill employee morale motivation 
industrial relations etc in these areas standards are laid down in intangible terms it's not seen but we can feel it second point measurement of performance the step involves measuring the performance in respect of a work in terms of control standards management becomes easy when the concern has clearly laid down its objectives and established standards if measurement detects de 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 deviations at the earliest then it will be enable to appropriate to take appropriate action on time if that is not possible then deviations should be detected as early as possible third step that is comparing performance with standard the third step it involves a comparison of actual performance with standard performance this comparison will reveal the deviation between actual and desired results comparison is very easy when standards are expressed in quantitative terms but if it is intangible personal observations are used to find any deviation fourth point is analysis of deviations all deviations need not be brought to the notice of top management when the deviation is beyond the prescribed limit an analysis of deviation is made to identify the causes of deviation and these are reported to the managers who will take necessary corrective action next taking corrective actions that is the last term this is the last step and where the variations are reported to the management and the management take corrective actions and he will take remedies also it can be by revision of standards by change in assignment of task training of employees if they need more training and improvement in the technique of direction now we can study the next topic that is the essentials of a sound control system we can study that first point focus on objectives and needs the control system should aim at accomplishing the organizational goals the control technique employed in an enterprise should be appropriate to its needs second point is forward looking a sound control system should be directed towards future it must focus attention on how future actions will conform to plans third one is prompt the dev the deviations from standards should be detected and reported promptly only then necessary corrective actions can be taken in time fourth point strategic control point the control system should attend to strategic and exceptional deviations only such deviations require the attention of the management next point is flexibility the standards should be altered from time to time only then they will conform to the present requirements hence the control system should be flexible in accordance with the changed standards next point is objectivity standards of performance should be objective and specific they should be quantified or variable they should be based on facts so that control is acceptable and workable next point is economical the control system should justify the expenses involved that is the savings anticipated from it should be greater than the expected cost on its working next point is motivating the control should motivate both the controller and the controlled the control should be used in a positive sense it should help the employees to improve their performance next point is suggestive suggestive means a sound control system must not only point out deviations but also lead to corrective actions this will control undesirable deviations from standards the 10th point is simple A good control system must be simple and easily understandable. Complicated techniques fail to communicate the meaning of control data to the managers. Now we can go to the techniques of controlling. 
what are the techniques of controlling usually there are two types of techniques one is traditional technique that is what you have to study according to the syllabus budgetary control techniques and non budgetary control techniques modern techniques you just need to know the names mis that is management information system second one is pert P E R T that you have to study in operations management uh, later. That is program evaluation and review method. That is in your MBA. No need to study in BBA level. Third one is C P M. That is critical path method. That is again comes under operations management. That is in MBA critical path method. Then R O I return on investment. That is you, that you will study in managerial economics. That is in fourth semester. Next responsibility accounting. and management audit you need not to study this but just for a flow i just said you have to study only the traditional techniques budgetary control techniques and non budgetary control techniques we can go to the budgetary control techniques first one budgeting is one of the most useful technique of control it is a process of preparing and utilizing budgets to evaluate actual performance A budget is a quantitative statement of objectives and programs for a definite period of time in future. It is expressed in monetary terms. It is usually prepared for a year. First of all, we have to study what is a budget. What are the types of budget? So we can study the types of budget in budgetary control techniques. The uh, types of budget. First one is sales budget. it is prepared by the sales manager and it is an estimate of expected sales during a budget period it is the backbone of the enterprise it's a starting point on which other budgets are based second one is production budget which is prepared by the production manager and it is prepared on the basis of sales budget in addition to that the company considers the production capacity availability of skilled employees power space and warehouse facility third one is materials budget the materials budget is concerned with the determining the quantity of raw materials required for production next is the labor budget the labor required for manufacturing the product is known as direct labor and the labor budget is very useful for anticipating labor time and cost of labor required for production next is factory overhead budget it should provide a schedule of all manufacturing costs other than direct materials and direct labor next you have to study what is the distribution overhead budget this budget gives an estimate of selling and distributing expenses to be required in the budget period for example salesman salary advertisement transportation cost commission etc it is closely linked with sales budget next you have to study what is an administrative overhead budget it is usually known as general and administrative overhead budget which includes all costs of a company that are not directly tied to the production or development of its goods and services next you have to study cash budget a cash budget is an estimate of cash receipts and payments during a future period of time it's a forecast of expected cash intake and outlay it helps the management to arrange finance from banks if need arises next is capital expenditure budget this budget indicates the amount required to replace the existing physical assets like building machinery furniture plant and equipment it is usually tied up with long range planning next is master budget master budget is a comprehensive financial planning document that includes all of the lower level budgets cash flow forecasts budgeted financial statements and financial plans of an organization it's usually developed by a firm's budget committee and guided by the budget director now we can go to the next session that is flexible budgeting flexible budgets are used to cope with future changes it is dynamic in nature it gives budgeted course for different levels of activity it facilitates comparison between actual and budgeted performance at different levels of activity next you have to study 
uh, performance budgeting. Performance budgeting is an output or input or course or results budget. That is, next one is, it leads to higher efficiency because it measures the activities in terms of outputs. Next, the focus of decision making and control is on results rather than merely on expenditure. That is known as performance budgeting. Now, we can go to zero-based budgeting. That will be a two marks question for you. Uh, it's the latest technique of budgeting. Instead of taking the current year's budget as the base, the budget is constructed from a zero base. All budget proposals are considered from scratch as if it were the first ever budget of the enterprise. All proposals are analyzed thoroughly to test their legitimacy, validity and effectiveness in the light of actual and changed conditions. Next, you have to study what is budgetary control. Budgetary control is a system which uses budgets as a means for planning and controlling the organizational activities. It's a process of comparing the actual results with that of the estimates laid down by the budget. It involves the following steps. First one is preparation of budgets. Second one, measurement of actual results. Third point, comparison of actual results with budgeted results. Fourth one, identifying the deviations, taking corrective actions to avoid deviations in future, revision or modification of budgets or plans wherever necessary. So this comes to the end of budgetary control techniques. You have to study from the beginning budget, types of budget and the following. Next, we have to study non-budgetary control techniques. That is very, very important. We have to study that. Now, control over the organization other than the financial resources are called non-budgetary control techniques. There are a large number of non-budgetary control techniques used in the organization. The important of these are, first one, statistical data. Second one, break-even point analysis. Third, internal audit. Fourth one, external audit. Fifth one, personal observation. Sixth point is good organizational structure. Seventh one, inventory control. Eighth one, production planning and control. We can study each and every one in detail. First one is statistical data. Statistical reports and analysis are very important control techniques. Analysis of statistical data in the form of averages, percentages, ratios, etc. is helpful in control of production, quality and inventory. Statistical reports are also useful for management control as they reveal whether prescribed policies are being followed or not. Second one is break-even point analysis. Break-even analysis is also called cost volume profit analysis. It analyzes the relationship among cost of the production, volume of production, volume of sales and profit. Here, total costs are divided into two, fixed cost and variable cost. Fixed cost will never change according to the changes in the volume of production. Variable cost will change according to the volume of production. The point at which sales is equal to the total cost is known as break-even point. Break-even point is calculated with help of the formula fixed cost divided by selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. The break-even point analysis helps in managerial control in several ways. Next point is internal audit. Internal audit is carried out at regular intervals. It covers all areas of operation. The report is sent to the top management. The management takes steps to control the performance on the basis of the report. It is very useful to achieve the objectives on a timely basis. Next is external audit. It is a must to all the joint stock companies. This audit protects the interests of shareholders and creditors of the company. The external auditor certifies that all the books of accounts are kept as per requirements of law. Next point is personal observation is the most effective and oldest method of control. It is the observation of actual performance of employees at the workplace. 
It helps the manager in taking corrective measures on the sport. It also has a psychological impact on the employees. The employees try to achieve better results when they know that they are being observed personally by their superior. Next point is good organizational structure. A good organization structure facilitates managerial control. In a good organization structure, everybody knows the part he has to play and how his role relates to those of others. It helps to improve productivity and removes obstacles to performance. It also ensures that activities are carried out as planned. Next point is inventory control. Inventory control is a control of materials used in and produced by the industrial concerns to ensure maximum return on working capital. Its main purpose is to maintain an adequate supply of correct material at the lowest total cost. Inventory control is exercised at three stages, purchasing of materials, storing of materials, issuing of materials. The last point is production planning and controlling. In short form, we will say PPC. Production planning and controlling is necessary for the smooth functioning of an organization. Production planning is a function of looking ahead, anticipating difficulties to be faced and the likely remedial steps to remove them. Production control guides and directs flow of production so that products are manufactured in a best way and conform to a planned schedule. Control facilitates the task of manufacturing and sees that everything goes as per plans. So this is the end of our fifth module. Study very well for your exam, module one in seven parts I have done. You have to study everything. Uh, as I said, you have to study Elton Myers Hawthorne experiments, only the findings, no need to study the four types of experiments that I gave you for a general information only. Then you have to study Henry Fayol, F.W. Taylor. These are the sure essay questions. Scope of management, functions of management, objectives of management, everything you have to study, what and all I have told you. You don't skip any questions because you don't have much option. So study very well. All the best, my dears. Thank you so much. Bye.